Welcome back to Surgical Pathology Slide Review and Sign Out with Dr. Lewis Hassel. Today we're going to explore another uh, element of uh, pancreatic pathology and perhaps also uh, have a little bit of review, if you will. So our case today, <clears throat> as we talk about some of the nuances of pancreatic pathology, is that of a 55-year-old man with a mass in the pancreatic tail. <clears throat> At low power of this resected subspecimen, we can see here the pancreatic parenchyma with its characteristic lobulated appearance. And it's pretty evident that we have a large mass here and a similar mass over here. This mass uh, looks quite vascular. We can see some vascularity even at low magnification. This may be uh, either vascular involvement or lymphatic space invasion. Um, and we see that it's fairly well circumscribed. It doesn't have an infiltrative uh, border. Down here at higher magnification, we can see that this um, does look like we have a little bit of vascular space invasion. Um, and again, we see this uh, very vascularized tumor, a little bit more of the uh, finer architecture of the lesion. And now here we see little cords, trabeculi, small microglandular uh, patterns, fairly uniform cells. And we'll go to high magnification here and we can see that these cells have mostly round nuclei, a little bit of variability in size, a few small nucleoli, and fairly abundant pink, slightly granular cytoplasm. Over the more vascular area here, and we can see that these cells have, uh, again, still a corded or geographic appearance uh, with very congested small vessels and a few other spaces. If we go back down to low power and go over to the other area here, we see a similar appearance to these cells And we can see, again, this uh, sort of patchwork, uh, trabecular and nested pattern that would be very characteristic of a neuroendocrine neoplasm. Not surprisingly, neuro neuroendocrine tumors in the pancreas have a, a wide variety of immunohistochemical profiles. Uh, they're pretty uniformly positive with synaptophysin, CD56, um, and generally a diffuse matter. And then depending on whether or not they express a particular protein, they may be positive for one or more of these uh, pancreatic uh, peptides um, and uh, uh, hormones. Additionally, one item that has been shown to be of some use, particularly in cytology, is uh, islet 1 plus. Um, as well as some other um, uh, in more specific uh, uh, antibodies. Variable reactivity can be noted with some of the seemingly specific um, antibodies like PAX8, CDX2, and TTF1 uh, in some of these as well. And that's something to be aware of, uh, particularly when you may be dealing with a metastatic tumor. Pancreatic endocrine neoplasms, of course, can occur at any point in the uh, pancreas, but are much more frequent in the tail, where the density of uh, pancreatic uh, islets appears to be slightly higher. So with that uh, discussion so far, let's take a quick look uh, at a couple of, uh, if you will, review cases. Here's a uh, tumor. 
uh, again in the pancreas. We see the pancreas here, uh, and you can see we've got you know islets and somewhat lobulated uh, appearance. And then we have this neoplasm here, which as you see has some uh, degenerative areas, variable cellularity, cholesterol clefts you can see right there in several areas. See the cellularity is uh, fairly uniform, somewhat similar to the nuclei that we just saw on the uh, neuroendocrine tumor. Sort of a salt and pepper pattern, a few micronuclei and so forth. Um, this tumor uh, was positive with uh, some neuroendocrine markers, but it was also positive with beta catenin. Um, this is an example, another morphology that can be seen in solid pseudopapillary tumor, which we talked about briefly on a previous video, and uh, just provides you an additional uh, look at the uh, variable morphology that we can see with these. This is one that's more on the solid side, doesn't have too much in the papillary side of things, uh, but you see we still have some of those other hallmarks that we saw, such as the cholesterol collapse, the areas of degeneration, and the typical nuclear features. Here's a slightly different case, but again, a little bit of review very quickly of some of the th entities that we've talked about before. We see here the lobulated pancreatic tissue, a little bit of chronic uh, fibrotic area here. A new finding over here, um, you see this is some pancreatic fat necrosis uh, with saponification, uh, foreign body reaction, fibrosis, and histiocytes. As well here, uh, we see a small area of a neoplasm. And as we look at this, this is not mucinous epithelium. This is this very watery, serous-type fluid with low cuboidal epithelium. So this is the edge of a serous cyst adenoma. It may have been an incidental finding in a patient who was uh, experiencing abdominal pain secondary to the pancreatitis. Obviously, pancreatitis, it coupled with a neoplasm like that, could give a more complex radiographic appearance and potentially lead to resection, which I believe was the case uh, with this patient. So that's our summary for today. Thank you for joining me, and we'll look forward to seeing you next time.